And this is Joan from Salmonella Place, and today we're going to talk about sugars, or in other words, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates can be divided into simple sugars and polysaccharides, and we're going to see that. But the first thing that I want to discuss is the importance of this, of this group of organic molecules, so their biochemical roles. The first one, you probably already know by now, is that they're great or they're very important energy sources. And this is how the body is able to store or use energy. And these molecules are able to store energy in covalent bonds such as these here, carbon-carbon or carbon double bond oxygen bonds. So these covalent bonds are able to store the energy that your body can use. Now the second biochemical role that carbohydrates are able to do is they're great carbon skeletons. And what this means is that these molecules are able to build or form these structures that are very important for life. And one example of this are cell walls I'm going to write here cell walls that you see in certain organisms such as plants and bacteria. One thing I would like to add is that carbohydrates, if you look at the word, are organic molecules comprised of carbon atoms, lots of them, usually in chains. And these carbon atoms are usually associated or bound to other hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Now there is a formula that helps you determine the proportion of carbons per hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Now this formula is as you see here, which says that for every carbon there will be two hydrogens and one oxygen. So say if we talk about a hexose, and a hexose is a simple sugar, simple molecule, carbohydrate molecule, or a monomer that contains six carbon atoms. Now six carbon atoms we can input here, and now I ask you how many hydrogens and oxygens you're going to find in that hexose. Now you use this formula which will tell you that you're going to have then 12 hydrogens, 6 times 2 equals 12 hydrogens and of course 6 oxygen atoms. Now it's important to know that carbohydrates are comprised of 4 or divided into 4 categories as we see here and we're going to discuss them in more detail later on in this tutorial. But this is to show that if we talk about a monomer, say a building block of a polymer, let's say, and I'm building one here, Say this is a carbohydrate, a simple sugar, a simple sugar that is a monomer or a building block of a polymer. And this is uh, the degree of going from one to lots of monomers, so lots of building blocks together. And as you see here, monosaccharides are then, as the name indicates, one or a simple sugar, a single sugar. Now disaccharides are then two sugars or two monomers. Oligosaccharides, very important class of carbohydrates, are comprised of between 3 to 20 monomers together. Now as the name indicates, polysaccharides are definitely great molecules or huge molecules, very large, are comprised of many, as the name indicates, many monomers or many simple sugars bound to one another. So now let's start talking about the categories of carbohydrates. The first one that we need to discuss are monosaccharides. I'm trying to spell this correctly because it's a complex word. And as the name indicates, mono means one, so one sugar, one building block of, for example, a disaccharide, a oligosaccharide, and finally the large molecules, the polysaccharides that we're going to see 
in the last slide. Now, what we need to know, and what I'm going to help you here, or what I'm going to show you now, is these examples of monosaccharides. And the ones that you see here on the left, these are called triosis. And as the name indicates, tri means three carbons. And if you use that formula in the beginning, three for every three carbons, you're going to have then six hydrogen and then, of course, three oxygen atoms. And this is what, if you count, you're going to see that both these molecules, even though different, they have the same amount of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. And as I mentioned, they're different. So this one is called glyceraldehyde, and this one here, dehydroxyacetone. Complex names for very simple molecules. Blame organic chemistry for that one. Now, what I want to show you here on the right are these monosaccharides known as pentoses. And pentoses, as the name indicates, then we have five carbons. And for every five carbons, again, the formula, we're going to have 10 hydrogens and five oxygens. And if you count here, this is a famous molecule known as ribose, an important constituent of nucleotides. If you learn about nucleic acids, we suggest you look at our tutorial here on salmonella place. But this is the, the ring that, that is found in nucleotides, the sugar that is comprised or that constitutes nucleotides. Now what you see here is the molecule in the linear form, but they're found most of the times in the ring form. So this is how you should find them. And I have two examples here. Why? Because these two pentoses in the ring form, these two riboses, are usually named as alpha and beta riboses. Why? Because of the conformation, as you can see here, the OH or the hydroxyl groups have different conformations and therefore you name them alpha and beta. Now we're still talking about monosaccharides here and I want to use this opportunity to talk about hexoses or to add to that list of monosaccharides that we discussed previously and hexoses as the name indicates we're talking about six carbon monosaccharides and as the formula indicates then we're going to have 12 hydrogens and six oxygens. Now I have an example here of a hexose, a very famous hexose. This is how your body gets its energy and this is glucose, a glucose molecule that you see here. Now what I'm showing here is the linear form and of course two ring forms. So when is in an aqueous solution this molecule here will form in these ring forms. And the ring forms that you see here depend or have two different types. You see two different types of ring forms. The first one is the alpha glucose and beta glucose. And this is due to the fact that they have different conformations on the OHs here, or the hydroxyl groups. And this is going to be very important later on when we talk about the glycosidic bonds or the way these monomers here will, will form bonds with each other and form then polymers or larger molecules. Now what I want to also add here on this topic is that there are other hexoses and here is a small list that you can see so you will see or you will find also fructose mannose and galactose as six carbon monosaccharides. So now it's time to talk about the second category of carbohydrates and these are the disaccharides. As the name indicates, we're going to have two monomers, so two monosaccharides, and these are bound in what we call a glycosidic bond. 
This bond is formed through a reaction where there will be a loss of a water molecule and this type of reaction is called dehydration or loss of water and you can also call it condensation. So one thing that you also need to know about these molecules, these disaccharides, is that there are a few that are important to know. So when you have a glucose molecule bonding, binding to a fructose molecule, you're going to be left with a sucrose. This is a disaccharide, very common disaccharide that you find in common sugar table sugar that you use to cook, for example. Now when you have glucose and galactose, you're going to form a type of sugar that is common, is found in milk, lactose. And some people have intolerance or to this this type of sugar because they're not able to break it down and convert it into energy. That's what your body tries to do with sugars or carbohydrates. Now the other type of disaccharide, important one to know, is when two glucoses come together, then this is called a maltose. Now still on disaccharides, what I wanted to show you here, how glycosidic bonds are formed, and I have here glucose molecules. These are all glucose molecules. And what I want to show you first is that you have the hexose rings formed here with the carbons. I'm not showing in detail. I'm just showing you enough so you can understand how important the conformations will or how the conformations will influence the bond formation. Now the first one here is how a alpha linkage is formed. And as you can see that you have the hydrogens in the same position and the hydroxyl groups also in the same position, which means that the, this bond is then going to be formed in such manner, and this is called a alpha glycosidic bond. And also don't forget that these are all glucose molecules. Now one important note is that there's going to be loss of H2O. Like I mentioned previously that in glycosidic bonds you lose one water. Now here in the formation of this one here you're going to find that this is a beta linkage and what happens here is you can see that uh, the hydroxyl groups are in different positions, different directions, let's say. And for that reason, the bond will have such conformation. And this is then called a beta glycosidic bond. Also, the reaction is happening in this direction and one water molecule is also loss because this is a dehydration reaction. So I'm going to go from disaccharides to polysaccharides and leaving oligosaccharides sorry, to another tutorial. What you need to know about polysaccharides, and like I mentioned before, these are a large number of sugars joined together in glycosidic bonds, uh, resulting in a polymer or a macro molecule. In other words, a large or huge molecule. They're very important in life, and I'm going to talk about a few that you need to know. And the first one, first type of polysaccharides, is one called cellulose. I want to say a few words on or about cellulose, and this is the main component of the plant cell wall. It's a linear glucose polysaccharide chains, meaning that the monomer or the monosaccharide that comprises cellulose is glucose. And I have here an image that illustrates exactly that. So you see here a lot of glucose molecules. I'm going to change the color into something you can see. So a lot of glucose molecules bound to one another, forming these chains, these linear chains. 
as I have here as well, these green circles, and I'm using red to show you that these represent glucose molecules forming these chains here, and this is cellulose. Now, the last thing I would like to say about cellulose is that beta 1 to 4 bonds link the glucose the glucose monomer to form fibers of great mechanical strength. Very important for the cell wall, the plant cell wall. As you can see, plant cells um, are very rigid compared to animal cells, and that's thanks to cellulose. Now, the thing here that you need to know, the 1 to 4 beta beta bonds means that the carbon in position one will bind in one of the glucose will bind to the other carbon in position number four. So every time you see this one to four means that it's the carbon position one will bind to the carbon position four in the other molecule. The second type of polysaccharide that I would like to talk about is starch found in plants. You have probably heard about starch in potatoes because this is the main form of storage of carbohydrates in plants. So this is how plants store their energy. Now another important thing to know about or starch sorry, is that this polysaccharide is comprised of a lot of glucose molecules bound to one another to form this macro molecule. The last thing to mention about starch is that one of the main forms that is found out there is called amylopectin and this is a form of starch that has alpha 1 to 4 bonds and occasionally there are some alpha 1 to 6 bonds which allow branching. So Starch looks a bit like this. A few or a lot of glucose molecules bound to one another, as you see here, and occasionally due to these specific type of glycosidic bonds, the alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic bonds, then you'll see branching. So right here you should find between these two here you should find a alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic bond. So the third type of polysaccharides I'd like to talk about is glycogen. This is how we store energy in our body, how we store glucose or carbohydrates in our cells. And for example, we use glucose whenever we need energy, we extract, let's say, energy from the molecule, the glucose molecule. But eventually we have to be able to store this molecule in our cells and we do it through glycogen in this form. Now we do it in the liver or muscles. That's where we can store glycogen. Now another thing that I already mentioned is that glucose is the monomer for this macromolecule glycogen. So because every time we need so, we find a way to break it down into the smaller part, which is glucose, and then eventually use glucose to get ATP, or the energy that we need to our own, for our own body, for our own metabolism. Now, I have an image here that kind of illustrates what glycogen looks like. It's highly branched, even more than starch, and this is how it should look like.